Okay, hey guys, we're live today. I am with John Laroni. Hey John, how are hey you, guys. buddy? All things are good. Awesome. So uh, another installment. Got a coffee, John? I see that we got the same. Uh, we got the same mugs going today. So I got, uh, I got, I got B. Mine. I got M B. Is for me. M is for mine. <laughs> B is for B. Um, okay, so listen, as you know, we try to keep these really current, and what we wanted to do today and what we were going to dive into uh, was the big announcement yesterday. Holy John? smokes, eh? Holy smokes, eh? <laughs> Holy smokes. So it, it's funny because we came up with, uh, we came up with uh, a topic. We were going to talk about representation and things, and then, man, Minister Mendicino hit us with an announcement yesterday that's uh, game-changing. So... The big announcement is, is that there's 90,000 people. I'm going to share my screen here, John, so that I can bring it up and show everybody. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, for sure. Because this is, uh, this is, man, this is game changing stuff. So here's the new, here's the news release. New pathway to permanent residency for 90,000 essential temporary workers and international graduates. Okay. So 90,000 people. Uh, we're going to go through some of the information and, and we'll put out some other uh, content on this. But I just want everybody to know that this is super, super, super preliminary. And, you know, the government likes to make announcements and then details to follow. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see <laughs> you're you're uh, you're nodding your head, John. Uh, yeah. But it's it, we. Yeah. We know how that kind of rolls sometimes with that. So, I, but here's the take. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, um, well, just go ahead. I would say I could offer a bit of background. At, you know, maybe we should spend just a couple minutes letting everybody know why this happened, and then we can talk about the mechanics. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So, um, why don't you take it, John? I'll All dive right. in there. Yeah, go. Basically. Basically, what the what the government has said, and that you know they're correct. That, you know we've had a huge segment of the population support the rest of the country through their hard work during COVID and putting themselves at risk, frankly. Um, and so there's been an impetus to um, you know help these people uh, in Canada who are on temporary foreign work permits uh, to become PRs, but also it coincides with um, the inability of the government. Uh, and Canada generally to meet the immigration targets for 2020 and to meet the immigration targets for 2021. So it's it's been decided that if you're in Canada and you have valid work experience um, or you're a graduate, you're looking at having a pathway to PR. Um, yeah, it's going to benefit. It's going to benefit again those people who who helped those foreign nationals who are in Canada who have helped this country out. But it's also going to benefit us. So. It's. Um, I think it's a win-win for everybody. But as we'll talk about, um, how are we? How is this going to be done? How is this going to be done? Well, Brandon, there you go. So okay, and I, I'm going to take what John just said, and I'm going to actually expand that even further to more bigger picture. So let's let's look at it big picture here, and then we'll 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 scale down into it. So there's a few things that are happening here. First off, we've got the lowest birth rate in Canada since 1918, all right? We've got immigration levels that were already high uh, prior to COVID, and now with the government not actually meeting their targets for COVID, they have other issues. Where are they going to get the people? The borders are closed, so they have to pull people from inside of Canada. On yeah. February, in February 13th, we saw a draw of 27,332 people in, uh, in Canadian experience class, which basically the lowest draw was 75 people. So with the lowest draw being 75 people, we know right off the bat that, uh, you know, they basically grabbed everybody out of the CEC. You mean so, 75 points? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, right? 75 points. Yeah, 75 points. Did yeah. I say 75 yeah. people? Yeah, uh, 25,000. Oh, thousands of people. 20, the lowest 27,332 people, and the lowest points were 75. That's right. So 
under the immigration numbers that were announced last fall, they need to bring in, I, I think for the federal, they were saying they wanted to bring in 108 and then it was like another 80 for PNP or somewhere around there. But the bulk of these have to come under economic programs, which yeah. will be through express entry. Okay. So there's, I, I got good news takes on this and I got some other like, yeah, like, I'll just address the people that are overseas, right? So the people that are overseas, you were left behind in this and you're left behind yeah. in a few things, right? That's, that's the and that's, unfortunate part. And that sucks. However, I firmly, firmly, firmly believe that the numbers do not support being able to grab all of the inventory that they need from inside of Canada. That's they just, it, it, yeah. yeah, go ahead, John. Well, it's just as it's the numbers, right? I mean, we're we're shy two hundred thousand. We've missed our yeah. targets by almost two hundred thousand in twenty twenty, and our target for twenty twenty one is four hundred and one thousand. So there's just not six hundred thousand. I mean, if you invited every single temporary foreign worker in Canada, just a blanket, you you wouldn't even come close to meeting of the six hundred thousand that we need. So you're right. I totally agree. When all the dust settles on this, the government is still going to have to take people from outside the country. Yeah. And I believe that that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And oh. the reason I believe that that's going to happen is, is because on April 12th, which was two days ago, there was another announcement. And guys, listen up to this one. The government basically has said we're getting rid of the COVID provisions, which allow you to extend out the time frame for documentation. And I think this will coincide with the opening of visa posts. Like, look, Canada is going through a bit of a rough patch right now in terms of COVID, right? Yeah. However, there's other countries that are starting to open up. Like, look at Australia and New Zealand. They've done a stellar job in terms of yeah. uh, dealing with this. And quite frankly, uh, when things really open up, there's going to be a flood. So if you're watching overseas right now, and I know I work with a number of people overseas, don't feel bad. You haven't been left in the dust, okay? But the people in Canada have been handed a gift, okay? So that's that's yeah. it. So let's parse through the gift. And I want to say to everybody, uh, next Tuesday, we're going to be diving into this a little bit more, uh, actually a lot deeper. And there's going to be some yeah. other content that we're putting out. Um, because like everything with a government announcement, the announcements come out and then we figure it out, right? There's there's very little parlayed in terms of the actual implementation. And I know even from some, some people within the department, uh, it can be a little frustrating for the department as well because then they have to figure things out too. So, uh, okay. So let's get into the announcement, John, because this is what everybody wants to know. So new pathway to permanent residency, 90,000 essential temporary workers and international graduates. Right. So, John had started uh, speaking about this, right? We were talking about what the issue was with people uh, that have been impacted by COVID. So, we've seen measures go into place for the international students with respect to getting post-grad work permits. And we've also seen measures put into place for uh, workers and being able to expand different things out. We've heard about this for essential workers and whatnot, which I think is fantastic because you know, people have helped out. They've they've dove in, but let's get into that. John, do you want to uh, do you want to start going through this right here? We'll start. Uh, we'll start about eligibility. I think is is the biggest thing we can start. Right. So, uh, in a nutshell, have you got a year of work experience in Canada? In, in yeah. your In your um, and it, you know, it's got to be on a, on a valid work permit, obviously. Uh, and is it in one of the occupations listed? Now, the occupations, and we won't, you know, list them all out right now because that, that would be too much time, but they're basically um, those in the medical and uh, allied medical fields, uh, all the way from physicians down to licensed practical nurses and even caregivers. And then it goes on to people who are in service support industries, um, people uh, are working in food processing plants. So it's, uh, it's some skilled, but a lot of people who are otherwise would never have a, a pathway to permanent residence um, are now offered one uh, in the lower skill category. So, you know, for those of you listening out there who, um, you know, been working uh, in, a, in a fish plant or working in a hotel or working in a restaurant or a cashier at a supermarket, this is for you. 
Um, and again, if you've been here a year uh, already doing that job, your, your pathway is now um, pretty open and, and pretty clear. Yeah, I actually did pull up those links and we can flash them up there. But yeah, for sure. like John, like John said, uh, it's it's one year of Canadian work experience. So let's let's just parse out what we know right now. So if mm -hmm. if you've only uh, if you don't have a year's worth of work experience right now, uh, OK, but the streams are open until November 5th, 2021. So. I'm going to suspect that these are going to fill up very quickly. What do you think, John? Yes, yes. And in fact, last night um, after the announcement, I noticed the uh, Celta English test site crashed because so many people are trying to uh, arrange their tests. And of course, because of COVID, uh, there isn't, you know, there isn't even the option, say, to go uh, to the United States and do IELTS. Um, everybody's got to do their test in Canada. So you know, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't actually know that. So the the the, yeah. the site had crashed last night. The Celtip site crashed. The IELTS site was still up. But the Celtip site crashed. Um, so wow. I would say to everybody out there, if you're in this situation, um, as soon as possible, as soon as possible, get your test date um, for either an IELTS or Celtip. Um, it's, yeah. It's important. Yeah, I get that because that's actually going to be a big limiter. And I know that I have clients right now uh that uh have failed to meet the required language benchmarks that they need um and i know that we're we're already today i've got other people on my team we're we're going through and we're looking and reviewing so that we can find people that this this is a this is a welcome uh this is a welcome opportunity for a lot of people so that's very exciting um okay so program opens may 6 you have to have one year of Canadian work experience. And as John noted, the cell PIP is actually very low. It's a Canadian language benchmark of four. Uh, yeah, very low. Uh, so it's very low, ve very low. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think you get, I think it's like three just to show up, right? So, um, you know, that that's huge. There's a number of different things too that I wanted to touch on. And I'm not, we're not going to get into because they also, there was a number let me just flash it up on the screen here. I wanted to show everybody. This is just one announcement, but you see what happened yesterday? We had all of these other uh, these other announcements come out. We had the temporary policy to facilitate granting of permanent residence for foreign nationals in Canada outside of Quebec with recent Canadian experience and essential occupations. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about today because that's by far the biggest. And what's important is, is that if you're in Quebec and work experience, remember Quebec has a whole different system, okay? So you'll see on each one of these things, it says outside of Quebec. Then there's the French speaking foreign nationals in Canada. Then there's the uh, people with a recent educational credential from a Canadian post-secondary institution. And then we've got French speaking nationals in Canada outside of Quebec with a credential from a Canadian uh, thing. So there's there was there was four different announcements on uh, April 12th, and then there was another uh, another announcement on April uh, 14th as well. So today's the yeah. 15th. Anyways, uh, we're not going to get into all of that stuff right now. Let's go back to where we were here, John, and let's just kind of parse this out for everybody. So I just wanted to go through that. So first thing, healthcare professions. Okay. Got to be in a healthcare profession, and we'll list out what those are, or an essential occupation. Okay, essential. So this does not this does not cover all of the different occupations that are out there. Yeah. Right. So, and international graduates within in the last four years, and not January twenty seventeen. Okay, I think that's you yeah. got to you got to parse out the information that's there already, right? Right. Okay. Right. Do you have anything to say on that, John? No, just that the, the, the medical, um, the uh, eligible health-related occupations under Annex A, um, they're almost all um, skilled. There are a couple in there like nurse aides and home support workers, but uh, the majority of those people are skilled. And if, you know, if they are have a year of work experience in Canada, they're also in addition to this wonderful announcement, may also just be Canadian experience class eligible. What's what's really um, uh, this program is really uh, exceptional for are people who would otherwise not be eligible 
under the Canadian Experience class. And again, I'm talking about your uh, your eligible essential occupations, your cashiers, your surface station attendants, uh, your truck drivers, uh, truck drivers. Um, uh, you know, uh, who else would be common? Well, let's uh, let's just you know. let's just take a look here. So, what John was referring to was skilled workers, and so again, mm -hmm. you see the, the first digit here is three, and what that means is is somebody from a healthcare uh, perspective, and then the second digit here. Uh, if it's a one or a two, uh, generally, you know, actually zero, one, two, or a three, um, then that actually means that it's skilled. But then what happens here, because uh, it's a B level and above, but what happens, you see this four, dental assistants, nurses, aides, other assisting occupations in healthcare, that opens it up to uh, non-skilled work. Okay, and that's right. uh, and and what's also important is four four one two, all right, home support workers and other occupations there, which is actually where the caregiver uh, program is is covering as well. Yeah. So that's interesting for PSWs. All right, let's move on to the eligible essential occupations. This is what John was referring to. We've got cashiers, service station attendants, guys. This stuff, there was no pathway for permanent residency under this. There was yeah. no, there was no pathway under this. So how do you, there, what do you, yeah. yeah, go ahead, John. Well, there was one exception in British Columbia. There was an exception. True. That, but you, if you'd been here nine months, you had a pathway to PR. But generally speaking, um, you're, you're right. There was, you know, so many of these people have been coming into Canada and working on a, especially the farm workers, have been working on a constant rollover of work permits year in and year out and year in and year out with no pathway to PR. So I'm really happy to see that those people um, now are being uh, tr treated, I think the way that they should have been treated and given a pathway to PR. Um, so it's, uh, it's again, it's, uh, it's expansive and there's lots of, lots and lots and lots of occupations there that, uh, that qualify. You know what? You just said something that was really uh, that was really interesting, and I, I say this from time to time. And um, you know, well, I feel that these programs are are going to lead to possibly some other confusion that's going to come out, and and possibly mm -hmm. whatnot. I also think that um, you know, a lot of people bring different things to Canada, um, yep. and you know, there's this. How can I put it? There's this idea that if, you know, you speak English well enough and you're educated, then, you know, you're going to fit into whatever. But I, I, I really, really, really have, a, I, this is, this is the one good thing that I like about this is, is that there's a lot of people that come here and they put in, you know, in, in, in a business term, if you want sweat equity, they're coming yes. here and they're working and they're, you know, contributing and doing all of these different things. And I'm happy to see that there's a pathway for people to be able to do that because right. I think sometimes we have this idea that, you know, people are, you know, I don't know, like if we have, we have if we have smart people that speak English well, then the economy is going to thrive. It's, it's not, a, somebody has to do the work. So yeah. I'm happy that, I, I think that that's the one thing that I really uh, enjoy about this. Uh, is that it's giving an opportunity to other people that are actually doing the jobs uh, that actually keep this place running. Uh, yeah, and I also yeah, they, de they deserve they deserve a fair crack for sure. And yeah. you know this goes this goes back to historical immigration to Canada, where you know our our grandparents uh, came to this country and they weren't laden down with PhDs. And I'm not knocking anybody out there with a PhD, but there are you know they a lot of people came here with 50 bucks in their back pocket and they. They contributed to this country with the sweat off the sweat of their brow, uh, like people now who work in the farms in BC and Alberta and, and the meatpacking plants. And I agree, they deserve a fair crack at this. And this this program is great for that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just gonna I'll just wing down this uh, thing here and point out a few things. So take a look at this, right? Uh, I this was this was interesting too was all of the people that are working in transportation. You've got taxi yeah. and limousine drivers, transport truck drivers. So, you know, mm -hmm. there was different mm -hmm. programs with the long haul truck drivers and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
but again, all of these, all of these are uh, here. And then you see a lot of the different labor type jobs in construction, yeah. which is right. interesting also, as well. And also, also the um, section 86 down there, all the people who mm -hmm. work in agriculture, right? It's, yeah. Uh, they're all going to have a, a, a great pathway. Yeah, no, this is great. This is great. Let's roll back uh, to this here. And again, I just want to say to everybody too, actually, there's a few things that I want to say. First off, if you qualify and you're in Canada, and I'm going to say this again, right? Because <laughs> you need to you need to understand this. I believe that, uh, well, I don't know, I but I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying, I think this is going to be a one-shot deal, right? Would you agree, John? Um, yes, there's a possibility it could be expanded if the feds are realized further into 2021 and maybe early 2022, the targets are not being met that they, cause why quite often what we see with public policy programs is they say it's going to be an effect for this period of time. They reassess and then they, what they do is they say, we're going to extend it for another 180 days. I could see that happening. I could definitely see yeah. that happening. Um, especially people. For those people who say they've just arrived in Canada, uh, say four months ago on their work permit, and they haven't got that one year work experience yet, and the feds look at the numbers of work permits that have been issued to these uh, uh, to these occupations over the time period, and they figure there's going to be another tranche of people coming through who are going to be hitting the one year mark, you know, in four months. Let's extend the public policy for another six months to allow them an opportunity to apply for this. That I could see happening. However, I, I take your point. This is this is a, a maybe a two shot deal, um, but no more than that. At best, is, at best, at, you know. at best. Like I I it, I would treat it as a one shot deal because yes. we don't know what's actually going to happen. Always plan that it's a one shot deal. Plan for being the one. Yeah. Thing. Get out there and register for yourself with everybody or your aisles. Do that ASAP. Yeah. It's it's bottleneck it's bottleneck time and the people that already have that uh, in in their pocket and it's valid mm -hmm. uh, there's you know that's actually very good for them the the mm -hmm. thing is uh, that I think is is that John actually touched on something that's really interesting and 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 actually very noteworthy public policies so public policies are something that come out and allow more fluidity in the immigration system if you will this is what this is this program doesn't exist. Uh, this was just this is just a policy that's come out and they've set the numbers. And I think what's going to determine there's going to be a few different things. A, COVID, that's the first thing, depending on how quickly the borders can open up. That's that's mm -hmm. the first thing. Secondly, mm -hmm. you know, public policy, pilot project, whatever it may be, you know, these different things, uh, you know, generally tend to tend to get extended, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think that, um, um, you know, generally uh, you're going to see this probably continue on, probably get filled up pretty quickly. And then if the borders aren't open, then it's going to actually uh, move, move from there. Yeah. Uh, John, why don't we switch to students because we're talking about essential workers a lot. You want to sure. dive into that a little bit? Sure. And we can, you know, I think, you know, you and I are in agreement. We're, we're, we're running at pace with this and we're probably going to have a lot more copies together talking about the rollout of this. Um, but let's touch a little bit upon, um, upon students too. So the background of this is that students are eligible for many programs if they have a post-graduation work permit and they've got a, uh, a year of work experience under their belt. But what the new announcements that this, the other public policy announcement done by IRCC today is, if you have a post-secondary program in Canada with the last, within the last four years, you're eligible for this. So the students who are here already don't have to wait to compile this work experience in a skilled occupation to get it. As long as, and I, if memory serves me correctly, as long as they're currently employed, um, that and uh, and and they uh, have that uh, um, a job in hand, and they've graduated then they're going to be able to apply. Am I right on that, Brandon? That's what I read yesterday. You, you, have, yeah, to have, I, you have to graduate you know what? you have to have a job or be yeah, working so, in a job. 
what what I what I would like they have to be job ready, right? There's so you okay, you, you kind of have to be in there. Yeah. So um what I'd like to do, John, I, I think that we need to do a, a, a big follow-up on this. I yes, uh, yes. we're parsing out all of the um we're parsing out all of the information here. And guys, please, uh, if, you're, if you're not liking our pages or can get notifications on, do that now because what we're gonna do is we're parsing out all the information and we're gonna put it out for you and we're also gonna film some other videos and stuff as well. Okay, and so- I, I, would, I would also add there's gonna be more announcements from the government on, on where to send the application, uh, bridging open work permits perhaps to, so people can keep working in Canada while this process is going on. We're expecting a lot more to come rolling out from the department. So yeah, stay tuned for sure. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, that's the other thing. I, I just want to address that because we're going to wrap up here and I, I don't want to get into and start telling, saying something that, you know, we don't have all of the details right now, guys. Yeah. This, this is just an announcement fixed and we're going to get more details on it and we're going to put it out. And the other thing is too, is there's going to be other clarifications, but really, Ultimately, it's probably May 6th when you're actually going to know uh, exactly what it is because they're going to put it all out, right? And yeah, it's going to yeah. start moving. So uh, let's do this. We've got a few questions here, and I just want to address a few uh, few people. Uh, so um, let's do this. John, I think we should delve into this on Tuesday again. What do you say? Yeah, yeah no, I agree. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's do this. Deval, okay, is there a chance for overseas farm workers? I got a six band in IELTS and ECA will be done in a month. Okay, uh, I would say there's a chance for an overseas farm worker if you're uh, in Canada. If you're an overseas farm worker uh, somewhere overseas, then no, this is based at people who are in Canada. So I'm not sure uh, exactly if you're overseas or an overseas farm worker in Canada. Uh, but other than that, a six bounds in IELTS uh, works. And yeah, I don't believe you need an ECA for that either. So I wouldn't worry about that. But again, we'll uh, stay tuned, Deval. We're going to, we're going to yeah. have, uh, we'll have some more information, John, you, uh, but thank you. Thank you for asking. Um, Mina, Mina, John, do you want to grab this one? Hi, Mina. Um, uh, Mina asked, as an international student, do you need one year work experience to apply? No. Um, I will, again, we'll be diving that into uh, in greater detail on Tuesday, but uh, um, the feds have said no. As long as you have graduated from an eligible post secondary program since 2017, you're in. Yeah. Yeah. So very new stuff. And uh, guys, let's just take this as a, you know, bit of a caveat on that. So we got to, we got to figure out, uh, you know, we're diving into this as much as anybody else. Yeah. Okay. As, as we understand it at this stage, that's the way it is. Yeah. That's right. Let's get rid of that. Uh, let's get rid of that announcement there. That's easier for people to watch. Um, okay. Uh, John. Oh, look, thanks. There's uh Great. Thanks. Thanks, Mina. Hey, thanks for yeah. watching. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, so John, hello, as I recently graduated from college last December, I am, uh, I am able to apply. And then there was another thing here that he had, uh, he had put up and, oh, no, nope, that wasn't him. Oh, but thank you, Deval. Thanks for watching. Uh, he did a two-year postgraduate in supply chain, and he's got a postgraduate work permit too. John, uh, John Max, that, buddy? Uh, John Max, you sound eligible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is, is this is uh, this this program has been designed with uh, with, uh, with guys like you in mind, recent graduates, no work experience. You know what? Um, you you know, foreign students have um, contributed to the country by coming here and. And going to university, we want you, and I'm talking from IRCC's perspective and mine, but we want you, here's your pathway to PR. So you're looking good, John. Uh, book that IELTS test if you haven't already, or sell PIP. Or sell PIP. Yeah. Yeah, get on that because you, you're going to need that. You got to look at where the bottlenecks are going to be. And I'll, I'll give my takeaways and then we can do that. Uh, we got a few more questions in here, guys. Guys, we'll, we'll, uh, we got a few more minutes here. So uh, if you have any questions, now's the time. Uh, we're doing this stuff live. Uh, okay. Remelin, I will soon be finishing on my second program this April 2021. 
Do I need to apply for a postgraduate work permit first? John? Um, that goes back to your uh, the, the, uh, the comment you made, Brandon, about being job ready. There seems to be something there where you have to be ready to work, and that may involve having to have a post-graduation work permit. So, Remelin, um, watch this space. Come and, come and um, join us next Tuesday. We should have some more answers for you. Um, uh, you also say you finished your second program. Uh, if you've already completed a, a, a program in Canada uh, in uh, the, uh, 2017 or afterwards, you may be eligible already. But again, watch this space. Um, you know, Brandon has said before in a lot of these podcast, a lot of our, our, our visits together, Coffee with John and Brandon, to um, you know, join the Facebook page. Um, more information is going to come rolling out, I'm sure, from Brandon's team in, in the next couple of days as as we find out about it. So uh, um, we should have a better uh, view of you, view for you by Tuesday. Um, and information is going to be coming out uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, let's keep moving there. Give me one sec. Uh, what do we got here? Let's see. All right, Kalpana, I graduate 2019, but I received ITA, so can I apply through this? Ah. Mm, that's, a good, that's a good question. Excellent question, yes. Kalpana. And that, yes. that and sorry, Brandy, you don't mind taking the lead on this one. That, to oh, me, yeah. you might you, you might want to stick with your ITA simply because, A, as Brandon noted, the program's not open until May, so there's like a couple of weeks. Um, and processing of this of permanent resident applications under the under the new public policy we announced today may take a, quite a while. Where um, express entry targets uh, for processing still are around six to eight months, and I still I see them being processed in six to eight months. So if you're if you're express entry eligible and you've received an ITA for PR and you meet all the requirements, you may just want to just plow ahead and make an application already. What do you think, Brandon? Uh, I think this boils down to strategy. And I also think that, um, you know, you know, is your odds at winning the lottery better when you have two tickets or one ticket? Um, you know, quite frankly, what you would be out of is government fees. And presumably, if you're applying under an ITA, and you have a strong application, uh, I would probably continue on that path. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. anything about your situation, by the way. So I just want to preface it there. Uh, maybe you're maybe you have 480 points, uh, you know, or, or or 470 high or whatever, and you're under CEC. Then I would probably feel that you're pretty safe, and you also have a fallback position there as well. Yeah. So, uh, however, um, if you're marginal and you got invited and it was like, you know. Uh, under that draw and you've got like 250 points and you're under that 27,000 draw, I would think that you probably want to uh, maybe look at your options, right? And that's where I think the strategy comes in for a lot of people. And that's what you need to actually, uh, you need to think about. All right, John, there's a few more questions here and then let's, uh, we'll wrap up soon. So uh, Pring, I'm an international student, 2018, graduated 29 RN and we'll start in May. Please advise. Okay. Perfect. Uh, John, you want to grab that? Again, uh, Pring, you look, um, if you're a graduate from a program in Canada, an eligible post-secondary program, probably eligible to uh, apply in May when this opens. Um, again, don't have to wait if, uh, if you meet the criteria. Yeah. And just to add on to that too, so presumably, uh, you know, international student 2018 graduated 2019. So uh, I'm not sure what you, um, oh, so I, I'm guessing, I don't know if you did a two year program, but I'm thinking from what you did there, it's probably a one year. So you've got a one year uh, open work permit uh, post-grad. Uh, probably not three because it wasn't two or more programs. So again, you might want to look at this a little seriously because you you do you don't have the huge buffer uh, if it's only the one. Oh, you got sorry, she just posted in there. She's got a two year. 
uh, okay. oh, a two year program. So you're going to have a bit of runway there. I don't know what your age and all the other stuff is and we can't, uh, Oh, three year postgrad. There we go. So, um, again, uh, you know, it's very, it's very unique, but you want to weigh this stuff out. Right. And this is where I think what we can do, John, is we can wrap up from there, uh, yeah. where if, if people, um, I, I, it boils down to strategy, guys. If you've got mm -hmm. other, uh, if you've got other irons in the fire, or you don't know, uh, or you have other pathways, then you might want to consider that. However, if this is something that you are, um, you know, comfortable, like the the ITA there, and you're you have really high points, then sure, like you know, mm -hmm. go for that. Um, go for that and, and stick with that. Don't, don't start looking here and like, Oh, shiny object over there. Let me go get that, you know, stick to your plan, figure out what it is. And in the coming time, we're going to have a lot more details. Um, if anybody wants to reach out, uh, we're going to put some details in the chat. Um, and you can certainly reach out. Uh, if you want to do a consultation or something, uh, by all means, please feel free to reach out with us. We'll take a look at your personalized situation. Um, but, Next Tuesday, I can tell you right now that we are diving into um, all of the other stuff there, okay? So please uh, make sure that you on notifications, all that stuff, but we'll be here from uh, 9, uh, 9.30 Pacific time and 12.30 Eastern time, and we can, surely, uh, we can surely sort you out then. All right? Awesome. All right, guys. John, it was good to see you, buddy. See you guys later. Look forward to seeing everybody on Tuesday. All right. Take care, man. Have a good one, guys. Stay safe. And we'll have later. a lot more details and watch, watch for that coming out. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye.